meeting of the Plaquemines Parish Council Audit Committee to order at 9.30 a.m. in the Bell Chase Council Chambers at 333F Edward A. Bear Boulevard to order. Roll call, please. Let the record reflect that all three members of the audit committee are present, that Mr. Duke is here representing uh, the audit department and that Mr. Peoples and Mr. Serpes are here representing the finance department from the administration. At this time, we'll ask uh, Mr. Peoples, who has just joined the parish government again, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic. Thank you, and happy new to you, all of you. Um, at this time, we'll move to item number two. The item number two is Plaquemines Parish Government Budget Units as of January 9th, 2018. Thank you, Mr. Duke. Uh, your mic, hold on. Request to speak. Hold on. Go ahead. Okay, we reviewed the uh, January 9th information for revenue expenses, and we found no issues. Thank you. Is that complete item number two? Correct. Move to item number three. Okay. Progress against the 2018 audit annual audit plan. Ferries Department internal audit draft report has been sent to management for their comments on January 8th, 2018. And we have sent the ferries audit to management for their review. We have gotten some replies from that audit, but I'm not completely satisfied with those replies. So I've asked for a meeting with the ferries department to discuss uh, those particular items that I have an issue with. And we also, we, we're at this point in time, we're looking into the civil service audit. Uh, and that's on the agenda a little further down. Okay. So at this point, uh, we, we can count on the administration to work with the internal audit office to try to wrap up this uh, ferry audit. Is that correct? The first copy I've got of this was yesterday. Uh, so I've, I've scanned the report. I haven't had a chance to review it in any, in any detail. Uh, I would like to ask Mr. Duke for, for all of his uh, reports or drafts of reports to uh, provide me with a copy as, as well as Mr. Cormier. Okay, normally. normally. And also if, if they involve finance issues, uh, Mr. Serpez as well. Okay, that's fine. And, uh, We'll get together and uh, work with you, uh, evaluate the comments, and, uh, and give you a response. Okay, appreciate that. Okay, so we, uh, we're happy to hear that the administration is going to work with the audit department to uh, resolve this particular issue on um, the audit of the ferry department and all future audits as well. So I would imagine that, uh, Mr. Duke, your department will create a uh, circulation of some type to be able to plug in the division of administration. But Mr. Duke, hold one second. Let me finish. So, I mean, is it my understanding that we will have a uh, circulation, for instance, for audits that involve the administration to plug in the uh, director of administration and the finance department and Mr. Uh, Cormier? Those three will be primary uh recipients of all work product drafts and so forth okay i want to make sure that we've got this perfectly clear so what we're saying is that the draft report will go to the finance department the director that the report pertains to <clears throat> as well as the other directors no uh if you're normally what i do is normally i send out the reports to the departments that are affected by the audit for comments. And I, I believe what we're looking for is 
that the director over the department exactly. will receive that, re that draft report. That's normally the, the And the finance department will receive uh, financial reports. I think you have saying the same thing. Right. Uh, let me clarify. Um, I would like the reports to go to the, the parish president, to me as director of administration, uh, to Tommy in finance, because the vast majority of, of audit reports do have financial issues in it. And then also to the uh, department, if, it's, if, if the report is regards a particular department, to the department head, as well as to the director of that department. Right, and that's normally what we've been doing. And uh, that's, I just want to make sure that the committee uh, is okay with that process because normally what we've been doing now so far is that the, um, the draft report only goes to the director uh, that, the draft, that the report affects and the people that it affects. It doesn't go to the directors that it doesn't affect. Okay, I, I would like the reports as well to go to me, uh, to Tommy, uh, Serpaz, and uh, to the parish president. Okay. Now, um, and at least we'll be aware of the reports, and if we have any questions, and we can get with the department and, and the director. Okay. For, for so we, we want to give full attention to all your comments. We appreciate your work, and we, we want to give them the uh, attention that they deserve. Okay. I just want to make sure that the uh, the committee is clear on who's going to get the reports. Okay. <clears throat> well, uh, let me, um, uh, Mr. Hold on. Um, so to be perfectly clear, the circulation of draft reports will include the parish president. Now, does the parish president read his emails? Uh, I can't speak to that. I assume he does. So. We'll, we'll have him at the top of the list to, to send that. So there'll be no question when issues arise that the parish president personally has received on his email the report or the draft report. Uh, that is correct. And, and then I, secondly, also we, wait, let me finish. Okay. Secondly, we will have the director of administration plugged in on all reports because of the fact that most of them have financial implications. That's correct. Secondly, we will have the director, I mean, the, the superintendent of finance plugged in on all reports or draft reports because of the implications of the financials in most reports. That is also correct. And the next item would be that the director directly affected by the report then would be added to the circulation list, but not on all circulation lists. That's correct. Only if their departments are involved in the audit. So is that clear? Uh, yes, thank you. Okay. So and then also the department head. And the department head, which would be a superintendent or foreman? Yes. Okay. Um, I would think that um, in most cases that the director the, the director could pass that on the, to the department head. That's right. That's that, that would be okay. It's worked for me as well. And I mean, because we are relying on the directors to supervise the employees under his department. That, and that would be acceptable, yes. So not a department head, because when you start getting into department heads, it gets to be convoluted as to what we consider a department head. Is it a foreman? Is it a superintendent? Or So we're going to deal with the directors, the finance department, and the president. Okay, that sounds good. That's correct. Sounds good. Okay, so we have a good understanding on that? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Thank Salvant? You. You're on. Yes. Um, my, my question would be to all of that, not that I'm opposed to the, to, the, uh, to the process that was just laid out, but my concern would be at what point does the committee get the internal audit committee get informed. I know ultimately the report is going to end up to us, but at some point, and I would, would like to make this request that the committee is involved, is included in that process somewhere along the line too, because there's times that 
you know, with me being on further southern end of the parish, that's just word of mouth, that's just things that get discussed that I don't get to, you know, I, I don't don't get the, the, the privilege that most people get. And I would like the committee to be to be included in, into that process also. Yeah. Normally my process in the past has been to give the audit committee and the council the uh, a, a final report, not a draft report. The draft report goes normally to the to management, the ones that can do something about the controls or the recommendations that I have. And I think the and request after is that report, after we hash it out, after the report is final, that it, final report will go to the audit committee and then to whomever the audit committee wants me to send. Yeah, but Mr. Duke, what, what my request is is that I'm requesting to, uh, to be included on a draft, the draft request, the draft report also. Okay. You know, if it's not too much to ask, I, uh, I would like no, the, the uh, committee to be involved in that okay. part of it. Okay. There may, may be something that that's that's that Jesse revealed itself that you know we may not have a, a, a committee we may not get the final report for another month or something you know at the end of the month or something but it may be something that we can can get a hold of, a handle on early on now just i want to make it very clear that the draft report is not a final report i understand be changes to that report i understand and and normally i don't want everybody to jump the gun on something that's going to change and say oh you know this is a big issue. I understand perfectly, but I still would like to have a right. committee included in the draft. Okay. Okay, so the committee now will be included in that same circulation list we just discussed. Okay. The we'll drafts and, of course, final reports. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Any further discussion on this item? Being none, we'll move to the next item. Uh, uh, excuse me, Mr. Roussel. Yes. We're on the, um, the ferry report. Okay. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, I saw this report for the first time yesterday. I've had an opportunity to scan it, but I'm not really haven't had an opportunity to, to review it in detail. And we will do that. I've discussed it with um, uh, Tommy and uh, Mr. Cormier, and they just saw the report for the first time yesterday too. So we'll get together and, and review the comments. Um, I'm not sure if this this report um, has the management response in it. One of the other reports. Well, well, hold on, we are on the ferry report. We're okay. talking about a draft report. Okay. The only next step that I see in this process is that Mr. Duke has to now send the draft report to all of the individuals that we mentioned in the process, which includes the committee, and which included you, the finance department and Mr. Cormier, if you haven't received it yet, and the um, director over the ferry department. Right. Now, so that's the stage that we're in right now. We're not asking that's for any, anything other than the process right now. We're developing a process to be able to make sure that we have a circulation list that covers uh, everything that we need to be covering. So at this point, we're strictly in a draft, as it says here. So there's no I, need I for a comment. I just to make it clear we haven't reviewed this yet. And we understand that. And that's why it says draft report here, and we appreciate you receiving it and looking at it and responding in a timely manner to uh, the Internal Audit Department. And eventually we will have a final report once all of those issues and uh, reports are completed. Correct? Yes. Let me be perfectly clear about a, the way I see a draft report. <clears throat> that draft report for the Ferries Department, I'm in contact with Mr. Joel Harton, who's the manager of the Ferry Department. I've asked him to come by so we could discuss his comments as well as my uh, conditions and recommendations. So at this point in time, for me to send that draft report to everybody when it's not complete seems to me that would be, because there's going to be another draft report probably coming out after Mr. Uh, after Joel and I you know, take a look at it. We may make some right. changes. However, um, if this audit committee has requested that we receive copies of all draft all reports. Draft. Okay. So I feel very comfortable and confident that this audit committee knows what the drawer draft means and subject to change. Just as uh, the Director of Administration, the Finance Department, understands that it's a draft report. So we're all working on the same page as far as draft. When the final report comes, 
then that'll be the time for any contentious issues that we may have subject to uh, recommendations and complying with the recommendations or not complying with the recommendations. So um, having said that, the Ferries Department is a pr work in progress. So we appreciate you receiving it and we appreciate you looking at it and working with it. Now, uh, as you said, you were working with Mr. Horton. Uh, I mean, if the director of, that's over that department and finance and the director of administration wants to be included in that meeting, then, you know, you should be included. And that should be no problem, and they'll have everything on the table. And we would like to have an opportunity to do that. Uh, for example, there's uh, discussion in this report about how you collect the... Wait, look, uh, we're not getting into okay. the details of the report. It's a draft report. So there's no need to discuss and argue that. Right now we are developing a process. Okay, and I'm, I'm just saying there are financial issues that, that we would like to discuss as well as the, uh, the person that runs the ferry department. We under, look, we understand that. I think we all should get together and sit down and discuss that. And some of the information that you have, uh, that you all have, would be uh, a good thing to, to, to add. And as we go along and trying to make that report accurate and a good report, I think the more information we have, the, the better off everybody's going to be. All right, so there's no need to draw swords at this point. And I'm not doing that. Okay, but I, I want to make sure that we understand that this is a draft, that we are working through it, and the process. That's what we, again, are developing. So having said that, there's no further comment on this item. We will move to item number four. Internal audits and process, civil service, poor travel expenses. Okay, the civil service audit is an audit in progress. I've got most of that audit done. I expect it to be out sometime in uh, late January, early February. The port travel expense audit, we've gotten information from Ms. Riley, who is the port controller. We're going to start reviewing that information uh, this month and hopefully have that report out as well sometime in February. Okay, and at this point, um, you've had cooperation from both entities and so forth. We have nothing, no issues to, uh, yes, sir. to discuss, and you have access to the information yeah, that you want. Yeah, very uh, cooperative. Thank you. Okay, we can move to item number five, if there's no further discussion on any of the items under number four. There are none. We'll move to item number five. A PowerPoint of the Plaquemines Parish Government Employee and Mileage Expense Internal Audit Report has been prepared for the Plaquemines Parish Council. Okay. Doesn't seem like it's, it's coming up from my computer. Okay. Okay, very good. Okay, this here is a review of the employee expense and mileage reimbursements internal audit. This audit focused on the accuracy and reliability and integrity of expenses, improvements to controls, and compliance with rules and regulations. My audit observations are as follows. The first observation was a concern about the lack of policies and procedures for mileage and expenses. My recommendation would be that uh, a policy and procedures <coughs> manual be put in place as a best practice to help guide the uh, employees in a department in doing what they're supposed to be doing, directing them to do the right thing and to, uh, and to uh, try to, you know, do, do things that are actually uh, trying to meet Plaquemines Parish goals and objectives. Would you pull that mic a little closer to you, please? <clears throat> Basically, I see policies and procedures as uh, an instrument that helps management reach their goals and objectives. It also helps uh, effective and efficient operations. It helps the reliability of financial reporting. It also helps everyone try to be or in try to be in compliance with applicable laws and regulations. 
The mileage and expense process is a process that the legislative auditors look at almost every time they, they do a uh, governmental agency. And so it's, it's really something that uh, should be uh, taken very seriously, as I know uh, we do here. <clears throat> but we try to make sure that the amounts on these expense reports are backed up by, you know, valid uh, uh, supporting documentation and, you know, valid uh, information on the documents. And we'll get into different, different aspects of this. But I do think policies and procedures are something that needs to be put in place here. I think it would help the overall Plaquemines Parish government. Next slide concerns. I created a flow chart <clears throat> to get an understanding or to help us all get an understanding of how the flow from ordinances and resolutions flow to the department heads and how the department heads write policies and procedures to direct their, uh, their staff. Poli you know, ordinances and resolutions, the way I see them, are, you know, they also can be considered policies and procedures you know, that, that go to, to, to uh, department heads, and department heads use these to tell their employees or direct their employees what to do. So this uh, little flow chart just is something that I've created to help us maybe understand, you know, that, you know, there, there are ordinances and resolutions, and there's policies and procedures. The department heads are the ones who write the policies and procedures to direct their department staff. And the Paris Council creates and adopts ordinances and resolutions pretty much to do the same thing, direct staff to meet their goals and objectives. Okay, observation number two concerns employee mileage expenses. I would like to see a little bit more detail under the purpose section of this, of these forms, the employee expense and mileage forms, such as why the business expense uh, and travel was necessary, the participants and business relationships, travel area from and to could use a little bit more detail. Observation number three concerns supporting documentation for mileage reimbursements. I would like to see either a map quest or a trip maker attached to the mileage reimbursement form. I'd like to see the amount that is shown on the map quest, the mileage shown on the map quest, be the mileage that is shown on the form. And I, I would like to see the payment uh, being made based on the map quest or a trip maker and, or an external uh, validation of the mileage driven. Observation number four concerns internal audit approvals in accordance with IA standards. Um, internal audit should not be involved in the approval process. We should uh, consult with management, review the process, and make any recommendations that we consider necessary to help uh, Plaquemines Parish uh, reach their goals and objectives. Observation number five concerns supervisory approvals. It should always be two eyes on every transaction, two eyes on every document, especially the employee expense and mileage forms. You should have your employee, you should have uh, some, some independent individual reviewing those forms to ensure uh, accuracy and uh, integrity of the amounts that uh, are being paid. On the next slide, you have an example of the employee expense form, and you have the purpose. I'd like to see a little bit more detail on the purpose, you know, why the expense was necessary, um, as, I, as I stated on an early, earlier slide, as well as supervisory approvals down below. I'd like to make sure that uh, the employee signs off. We have a, a second or a 
you know, a second party reviewing these uh, these expenses. Next slide is the employee uh, reimbursement. Uh, and this is again, you know, just to make sure that we we have the documentation of the mileage that's listed on these forms backed up by ex uh, a valid external party such as TripMaker or MapQuest. And I need to reiterate the fact that what is on the MapQuest should be the mileage that is put on this form, and we should pay based on that. Our observation number six concerns monitoring procedures. I'd like to see each department having a checklist when they review these forms to help ensure the accuracy of the dates on the forms, the time on the form, the business purpose. Is there enough detail? Do they think there's enough detail on the, on the form? Is the account coding correct? Authorizing signatures, do we have uh, two valid signatures? Has the employee signed it? Do we have someone else that has reviewed it and signed off on it? And do we have the proper supporting documentation to ensure that we're paying the right amount of expenses? Observation number seven concerns a lack of an organizational chart. Uh, I would recommend that Plaquemines Parish have an overall uh, organizational chart. I think that would help all of us, especially me, knowing who to send the report to, who's in charge of what. And as an example of this on the next slide, Jefferson Parish administrative structure. This is um, this is an example of what we could could use. Observation number eight concerns a lack of internal control framework. It just seems to me that I, I know we have a type of framework in place, but I just wanted to recommend that you might want to consider looking at COSO, which is the commit, Commission of uh, Sponsoring Organizations, which was created by some uh, corporate executives in 1985 to help reduce fraudulent activity and to help increase internal controls throughout corporate America. An example of um, the components of COSO is that we need a good control environment throughout Plaquemines Parish. And from what I've seen so far, I think we have that. Risk assessment, identification and analysis of, of risks as we go along. Yeah, department heads can have meetings on risk assessment. I think that might be a good idea. Is there, you know, what can go wrong with this process and catch it before anything it's bad. Control activities or policies and procedures. We need policies and procedures throughout Plaquemines Parish. Information and communication. How is all of this communicated? Do we have an effective communication process throughout Plaquemines Parish to, uh, you know, to make, ensure that we have good internal controls in place and that we have a good deterrence to fraudulent activity? Monitoring activities. You know, are we, uh, you know, monitoring everything that we should be monitoring? Um, and I, you know, from what I've seen so far, it looks like, you know, we are doing doing a pretty good job of monitoring uh, so the two processes I've looked so far. The ferries department and the mileage department. We have some good good controls in place, even though I had some, you know, some recommendations to try to improve those controls. Observation number nine concerns a resolution number 13184 in meals. When I looked over this resolution, I did note that, you know, they, they didn't really seem to have anything listed that stated the, dis the business distance that employees would have to travel away from the home or office in order to receive reimbursement. But that might be uh, something that the ordinance could, could put. Uh, we could maybe amend and put that in the ordinance. The uh, overall, this process I thought was a good process. You know, accounts payable was doing a, a really good job before I came here and ensuring that the proper amounts were being paid. Uh, 
You know, I didn't know, notice any significant control issues or errors, irregularities. And when I talk about significant internal controls, I'm talking about something material relating to the financials that could cause uh, Plaquemines Parish some serious, serious problems. Um, so that, that's pretty much the, uh, you know, the PowerPoint on, on mileage and expenses. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them for you. Ms. Alvin. Yes, uh, Mr. Duke, I, I would just like to be the first to commend you on such a great job and the effective job that you're, you're, you're about to do and embarking on doing for this, this government. And of all of the, the great things that you've just showed in this PowerPoint, the one thing that stands out to me is the observation number seven where you're addressing the lack of uh, an organizational chart. I think if any good government is going to be effective, I think they need to, to adhere to, to an organizational chart. And I think that's, we have been operating without one for so, you know, you just like ants in an ant pile, just running into each other and nobody knows who's, who's the hierarchy. So I, I commend you. For, for taking the effort of trying to, to get this government back on track where we can have an effective government. Thank so uh, I want to be the first, I just wanted to be the first to thank you for your efforts. Thank you very much. Councilman Juno. <clears throat> yes, I also want to thank you. We do need this and uh, I'm, I'm glad you're checking the mileage and, and all that because I think that has to be done. Thank you very much. The uh, administration would like to comment. Um, I'd just like to comment, first of all, that uh, where management response is listed, uh, it says in many cases the Department of Administration and Operations concur. I don't know who that is concurring. Um, well, 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 let me say this. Prior to you coming around, that's who concurred, whoever it was in the president's office. And that's why uh, Mr. Surpass might be able to enlighten us, and so may Mr. Duke. But <clears throat> uh, well, I, I've discussed it with uh, Mr. Surpass and Mr. Cormier, and neither one of these, n neither one of them, were aware of these comments. Okay, Mr. Duke, would you like to respond? Well, they, uh, I do have emails concerning these comments, and who was in charge of your department at the time? I have emails uh, from her, you know, giving me these comments. I also have emails from the department head um, of Mr. Giles' department as well, confirming these departments. So uh, uh, we, we've got a distribution <clears throat> list now that's been put in place. Mm -hmm. So the, the people on, those, on that distribution list should have, a, have an opportunity right. uh, to respond. You know, I, I too appreciate your efforts on this. Uh, I think travel uh, and, and mileage expenses, uh, they're a very political issue. As you mentioned, I get lots of attention from the legislative auditors, from, from the press. Uh, this parish, in my experience, has been very frugal about its uh, travel and mileage expenses. Uh, there's been very little abuse in that area. Um, when I was internal auditor, there was a lot of effort to make sure that the expenses were properly documented. And we'll look at all your recommendations here and, and, and address these recommendations and uh, make sure that things are being properly documented. Uh, you know, as, as far as the, um, the approval by internal audit, I don't, I don't think that was ever the intention on expense and mileage reports, but I think it was the intention of the um, of the council that internal audit review review all mileage and, and uh, employee expense reports. And uh, when I was internal auditor, we summarized those by year. Um, uh, each year, we gave details of, of all of those expenses and provided that report to the audit committee as well as the, the entire council. And we reconcile that the total of that report to the general ledger to make sure all expenses were covered. And uh, there is a lot of review that uh, may not be properly documented that we'll try to make sure that it does get better documented. 
Uh, for example, um, the accounts payable uh, department looks very closely at those reports and kicks them back if they think they're, they're not properly documented. Uh, we will make sure that that's getting the proper re review uh, within the finance department and, uh, and by the department heads. But I think it's still important that you give it a final review to make sure that the uh, required documentation is there. I'm not calling that an approval, but since it is such a serious political issue, I, I think it's uh, important that that, uh, that you do that. Yeah, and I agree. We, uh, we are looking over those mileage and expense reports in great detail when they come to our office before we send them to accounts payable. And I want to reiterate the fact that uh, accounts payable is doing a great job with kicking these back to either, or either the internal audit department or to the directors before I got here on the job. Okay, and I'd also like to note that uh, neither you nor the um, external auditors, uh, I'm, not, I, I'm not aware of anybody uh, finding any significant weaknesses in, in the controls over that, but we will, I didn't find we will, we will look at these recommendations and, and respond to these recommendations. Thank you. I appreciate that. However, uh, personally, after reviewing this, I would like to see some of these recommendations implemented through the administration to, for instance, if we're going to pay for meals and there's going to be meals paid, I would like to see the individuals listed who attends the meal and also the purpose of the meal. That's, uh, and I agree with that. And that's, uh, what we'll probably do is add something to the bottom of that form uh, in which we require that that documentation be added. Now, I don't think it necessarily has to be added to the, um, the form itself as long as, as the documentation is included with the expense report. But, but definitely, where, where expenditures are covered, the business purpose, including the, the, uh, the people involved, should, should be documented. Mr. Peoples, I really want to re reiterate this fact. The amount on the MapQuest or the TripMaker should be the exact amount that is listed on the mileage reimbursement form. And I hope we all could agree with that. So, so let me say this. We do agree with that. Uh, but you, you said also, from what I understand, again, I haven't reviewed it in detail. But well, look, let me say this. Since you haven't reviewed it in detail, we're not going to get into a lengthy discussion here. Take okay. the time to go back and review it. And when you agree, you agree. When you don't agree, then we will hash it out at a later date. Because uh, you said that you didn't have the benefit of looking at this or approving this. Someone prior to you did that. That's the reason I asked, does the president read his emails? Because when I see the administration concurring with the preliminary report, I'm assuming that the president understands what his administration is doing and concurring with. Now, that's the way I believe it should work. That's the way I'm hoping it's going to work. So we're starting fresh today. We have an internal audit department making some recommendations. You get a second shot at it, we'll disregard what has been reported to us prior because of the change in leadership in the Director of Administration's office, and we'll go from there. And like I said, I'm hoping that we can come to together to create and implement some of these policies. As Mr. Duke said, the Finance Department is doing an excellent job, and there are not that many hiccups in the system. But we're looking to improve the system. Absolutely. And that's the goal of this audit committee, to be more efficient and run a government that is squeezing every nickel because we don't have many nickels. So having said that, uh, I think we can move on and we can get, to, all can get together and go from there. And at the next meeting, hopefully this can be brought back to us as an agenda item and we can see what we have done to progress to solving what we see as some needs to be resolved. Any further comments from I anybody? I would also um, ask the committee, if possible, to send an email to me uh, describing the distribution process of the draft report and the final report, if that's, if that's okay. 
you need the guidance from that other than what we've said here? Yeah, I'd like reduce to reduce it, it to writing. writing. Is I'd that like for, to have that in an email if I could. Is that for the record? Yes, for the record. Just to make sure everybody. Let me, let me put it on the record. Make sure one more everybody's time. getting the report they I'm should a, be getting. I'm gonna put it on a report on the record one more time, which is the video. Okay. So we'll have a video record as well. Okay. The distribution will be that draft reports will go to the audit committee. They will go to the director of administration, the superintendent of finance, the parish president. And in cases that it affects other than the director of administration to those two other directors, would other directors being affected by the draft report? Is that the clear understanding that we all have? So in this particular situation with the ferries audit, Mr. Peoples wouldn't have gotten a copy of this. Yes, he would have. He would have because it affected him? It, Mr. Peoples will be on the distribution list for all okay. draft audits all right. because he is over the finance department. I see. Got you. Okay. Now, Mr. Giles, who is over the ferry department, will be included in that distribution of the ferry report because of the fact that he oversees the ferry department. Now, if it is another department, for instance, the next director, whoever, Mr. Beschel, if the audit had something to do with public right-of-way maintenance, or some department under his purview, then he would be included in that distribution, as well as Mr. Peoples and the superintendent of finance and the president and the audit committee. Okay. Now, what about the council? The council will get reports from the audit committee, and we will Final draft. We'll finalize everything. Okay. Okay. And I think what, what may be able to help you, Mr. Duke, is... Uh, I know my office have a listing of the departments that falls under each director. That would be a lot of help. You know, so I think administration probably can uh, can afford Mr. Duke that list because I know my office has. And it. we will do that. I, I agree with that comment. Yes. And so the, the full council will re receive a report from the audit committee. So they are not involved in the day-to-day -day operations of the audit committee or in the day-to-day -day business of the audit committees work with the administration, but when we come to a final report, that's when we will involve and notify the council. Yes, yes sir. Uh, let me make this comment, too. As, uh, as director of administration, I intend to fully cooperate with the internal auditor and with the audit committee. Thank you very much for that comment. And uh, what I also would uh, offer that is that if the finance department and the director of administration sees a beneficial process of issuing reports to the government, then, you know, this internal auditor shouldn't stop any reports that you would like to produce for transparency purposes. Because his role, in my opinion, in that department is to oversee a broad picture with samples. Now, if you want to produce a report like uh, you, your department, when you were the internal auditor, re re produced a report of 5,000 and over expenditures. If you want to produce that report from the finance department, that's fine also. So I don't think that we should inhibit anybody from sharing information. Normally, yes. right. Yes, sir. Especially if we, at the end of the day we're all working for the same people. So... Any other comments on any of these items? I just want to say that normally, you know, my audit reports, like you said, Mr. Roussel, involves a sample, and I go from there. I don't really, in the past, I haven't put out the reports that Mr. Peoples has been talking about. However, those reports that he's talking about are in my work, a lot of that information is in my work papers. Right. Okay. We'll work this out, and in six months we'll be smooth. Hopefully before then. Okay, just one other comment is where there's a, uh, a broad statement of management response, uh, the departments of administration and operations concur. Uh, I would like to at least know who those people are that are concurring. Well, let me say this. It, it, it doesn't really matter if you want to look in the rearview mirror. We've started fresh here today. Right. Okay, so I don't know. I mean, if you want him to waste time and go dig up those emails, he can do that for you. 
and you know that'll be some employee that'll get thrown under the bus because maybe the president didn't know about it. But the point is, is that he relied on somebody to say that the administration concurred, no matter who it is. But I'm talking about moving forward today with the distribution process. You're getting a second bite at the apple to either concur or not concur. So I think that at the next meeting, if you decide that the administration and the administration decides that they don't concur with one of these recommendations that have been concurred with by a previous employee, there's no need to go backwards and, and, and have that hash out. We're looking moving forward, and that's what I'm hoping that we do today. So if you want to get offline and deal with Mr. Duke on his emails, that's another subject, and that's fine. Mr. Roussel. Normally, in my audit reports, I do not like to target people. I do not like to put names in my audit reports. And so that's basically where that, where, where those uh, uh, rec comments came from administration and operations. I could have easily put those names in there. But for me, I just think that's a bad idea to do that. Well, so I, do I'm not suggesting that the names go in there. I just want to make sure that... Uh, when there's an, a, rep, a representation that the administration concurs, that that representation is coming from the administration and not necessarily from one individual employee at a lower level that may not have the, the full details of well, what's well, being well, addressed. Well, let me ask you this. From the distribution process that we developed here, that shouldn't happen because they will not be getting the draft report. I agree. But, but, but I think uh, to, to add to the conversation, and I think both of you all are correct, and I think Mr. People's concern is, 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 is proper, and is because of the fact that we, he had uh, the, the administration, director of administration office was operating with uh, a secretary for some time. His concern is he want to know is, uh, you know, did the internal auditor speak with someone with, with that, with the secretary, not necessarily to to broadcast, as you say, to to target it someone, but to answer that question, Mr. Peoples, is it was 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 a very good comment that Mr. Roussel made. You know, if you want to look in the mirror and go back and say, well, no, we we didn't, we don't concur with what whomever said, whatever, and I'm not saying maybe Crystal or someone did uh, step up to the plate in Europe before you were hired, but that's not what we want to do. We want to move forward. If you have objections to the concurrence that's on the book now, you can bring bring that forth at the next meeting or wherever, or meet with Mr. Duke and say, well, hey, right here I have a concern uh, or something of that sort. But the main objective is, as Benny just stated, that we want to move forward. We want to all get on the same page. And if we have the same goal in mind, I think this, this is where we, sh we should be traveling toward meeting a goal, making this government a more effective government. And I think we'll do that going forward. I, I think it's very important that uh, uh, Tommy and I have an opportunity to uh, to meet with Mr. Duke as well as the department that, that's uh, being affected by these comments to get a better understanding of what the recommendations are and to, to, to follow up on the recommendations. and. It's, uh, it's a matter of communication, and I think we'll work that out going forward. Thank you. Any further comments on any of these items? Hearing none, thank you all for your appearance today, and Mr. I uh, Roussel. look. Mr. Roussel, can we approve the minutes before we adjourn? Yeah. I just wanted to thank everybody for their appearance. We'll move. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the minutes of the November 9th? I second. Machine is open. <laughs> minutes are adopted three to zero again thank you all for appearing um, we have a motion to adjourn motion. second offered by uh, councilman juno second one councilman salvan machine is open and the meeting is adjourned at what time 10 19. 10 19. thank you all for coming We'll see you next time. Get me the, um, the, the current mileage needs to be report forms.